you have questions about your employment rights, Ask a Lawyer is here for you. Each week, experts from employmentlawyer.ca answer your questions. Visit cp24.com slash askalawyer and watch Wednesdays at 9.30 p.m. on CP24. Welcome to this edition of Ask a Lawyer here on CP24. Good to have you along. Stick around for the half hour. You're going to learn lots about employment rights and workplace law. We shatter the myths and misconceptions. I'm John Scholes. Joining me momentarily, our good pal, Lior Sanfiru, lawyer, of course, at stlawyers.ca. We always tell you right off the top to reach out to Lior if you want that lengthier conversation. It won't cost you a dime to pick up a phone, one 855 821 5900 email is ask at employmentlawyer.ca and we'll give you some other contact information and websites throughout the half hour. Main topic in just a bit, terminations versus layoffs. What's the difference? We'll break it down very shortly. Get to some of our phone calls from our long running radio show, which you can tune into and actually join the show by picking up a phone and calling us during the hour of radio, Sundays, 1 p.m. on our uh, sister station, News Talk 1010. We'd love to have you join that show. Maybe your voice will appear on this show. Lots to get through emails as well, but we always start every show with the uh, the week that was, Case of the Daily or Pal. This is where your expertise comes into play. There he is. Good to see you again, pal. What do you got this week? Uh, doing great, John. Really yep. excited to be here to talk about employment law and to try to shatter those myths, as you say, to give people the real honest truth when it comes to workplace rights. That's what we do on this show every single week. We tell you what you need to know, what the law says, not half a bit of information here, half truth there. Everything you need to know, the facts, the law, the real uh, rights that you have. If you're working and you need to know your employment law rights, whether you're working full-time, part-time, whether you work for six months or 65 years, doesn't matter, you have rights. We have extensive employment law rights across this province. And on this show, we'll tell you what, uh, what you need to know and how to deal with these issues that may come up. If you have a bad boss, if you're losing your job, if your job is changed, if you're being harassed, you get it on the show. We tackle those issues and give you the information that you need to know. And of course, this is only a 30 minute show beyond the show. I'm not going anywhere. If you want to talk about your workplace issue, if you want my help in getting that issue resolved, very easy to do. Contact information. You'll be given that throughout the show today. So watch out for that. But let's start with the situation that came across my desk. John, I spoke with a lady that had worked for a few years at a, a company that does home renovations. She recently got a new boss and this boss started doing, asking her to do things or demanding that she do things that she wasn't comfortable with. For example, to lie to customers about when certain pieces of, of equipment will come and, and where products will come, when the work will be done, to even fudge invoices and add things that are, are not appropriate and, and to add things or work that wasn't done to an invoice and to send that to the clients. She was extremely upset, extremely uncomfortable. And she called me with a simple question, well, what do I do about this? So let's break this down a bit. Your employer certainly should not and cannot ask you to do things that are inappropriate, that are illegal, that are deceiving, dishonest, misleading, whatever the word is. That's not what you signed up for. So your employer should never do that in your situation. So what happens if your employer does that anyway? Well, if your employer does that and you can show that that's what they're doing to you, you may be able to treat that as a constructive dismissal. You may be able to say, by putting me in the situation where I'm being demanded to do inappropriate things, I can treat that as a termination and require you to pay me my severance. It's not something your employer can do. The key, of course, is to be able to show what your employer is demanding. So I told her, send them an email saying, you asked me to, to fudge this invoice, or you asked me to tell this to the client, because you have to have a record of that. But she can treat that as a constructive dismissal, and so can you. If your employer is asking, demanding, threatening you into doing things that you know you should not be doing, not legal, a constructive dismissal. We always know uh, your email confirmation is always good in that situation. Can you back it up with uh, audio confirmation, meaning can you record a conversation between two people? Are you allowed to do that? You absolutely can record it. If you're speaking to someone, you're allowed to record that conversation. You can't record other people's conversations without them knowing, but you're allowed to record a conversation you're part of. So if you know you're being called into a meeting and you know that there's things that are gonna be discussed at that meeting you, you wanna have a record of, yeah, you can have your phone on record, 
even if your employer doesn't know about it. And yes, that's something that's legal. And in some cases, that could be very useful. And again, similar matters to this or anything else for that matter, reach out to Leon and his team, 1-855-821-5900, askanemploymentlawyer.ca. Scan that QR code as well. I mentioned our radio show I've been running for years and years. You can get it locally here in the GTA News Talk 1010, Sundays, 1 p.m. Join us, call the show. Leon, let's get to our first call from that radio show right now and talk about it. My brother worked for a large international insurer. For 11 years, he made about 125000 per year. He had a very, very bad fall, was hospitalized. He first went in short-term in LTD until last week, which would have been two years, and they are no longer continuing his benefits or his income replacements. My brother is still not able to return to work of any kind. How old is your brother? 59. And everything is okay with his employer at this point? No, not at all. They are saying there's no job for him there, or is he entitled to severance, or is he entitled to be put to pasture, so to speak? We're just really confused as to next steps the two-year mark pretty common yeah so there's two things that we want to discuss here first of all it was with respect to the disability benefits just because you've reached two years on being on disability does not mean you can be cut off disability benefits if your doctor is still saying you cannot work you're not able to work the insurance company should not be cutting you off and if they do that's not right that's illegal and we can get that reversed or get you compensation in fact we have a whole team dealing exclusively with this issue so if you're ever in a situation where your disability insurance has been cut off you call us and you call us right away and we'll deal with that the second aspect of this is the job. Now, if this person is able to somehow come back to work and their employer is saying, we don't have a job for you, if legitimately they don't have a job, they've tried, they've looked, and there's nothing there, then of course they have to pay this person severance. They can't just send them off without compensation. You can't lose your job without severance. So the final question then becomes, how much severance does this person get? Well, we're going to do what we like to do on the show, which is we're going to use our severance calculator tool to show you how that's done. We're going to go to pocketemploymentlawyer.ca. Let's plug the information in and let's see how much severance this person is owed. So we know he's a professional at the age of 59, being there for 11 years. Company hasn't said anything about severance, but you see there right at the bottom of the screen that he's actually owed right around 14 months, 14 months of pay, 14 months of severance. That's what's at stake for him. You as well at home. If you lost your job for any reason, you can go to pocketemploymentlawyer.ca, use the severance calculator, and find out how much you're owed. All right, good start. We're all warmed up. Got to take a short break. On the other side, terminations versus layoffs. What's the difference? We'll drill down on that after that break. Stick with us. Lots more to go here. Ask a Lawyer on CP24. You have questions about your employment rights? Ask a Lawyer is here for you. Each week, experts from employmentlawyer.ca answer your questions. Visit cp24.com slash askalawyer and watch Wednesdays at 9.30 p.m. on CP24. Welcome back to Ask a Lawyer. This is CP24. John Scholes, Lior Sanfiru, of course, is alongside stlawyers.ca. Any time to reach out to Lior, make the phone call. Might be the simplest way, 1-855-821-5900. Email ask at employmentlawyer.ca. It was just that simple. We'll probably get to some of your email a little later on in the half hour. But our main topic, terminations versus layoffs. What's the difference? Break it down. Lior, let's start, I guess, with terminations. What does it all mean? And maybe give me an example or two of, of those terminations. What do you think, pal? So we want to understand what the law calls situations where you lose your job. So there's various terms that people use when you lose your job. For example, being fired. The law does not have that concept, that term of being fired. That's not a legal term. There's no such thing anywhere in law called being fired. So what happens if you lose your job? That's a termination. And there are two types of termination. First is a termination without cause, which means you're let go not because of something awful that you did. That means, of course, you're, you're owed your full severance and you can be let go without cause for any reason as long as severance is owed, uh, is paid, of course. The second type of termination is a termination for cause or with cause. And what that means is you're let go only because of something awful, terrible that you did. And because what you did was so, so bad that the company doesn't pay severance. Of course, if the company gets it wrong, if the company does say that they're terminating you for cause, but you didn't do something that bad, 
that becomes a without cause termination, and they have to pay your severance as much as 24 months pay. The other half of the conversation now, Lior, is layoff. There's a term we've heard so many times over the last three or four years, of course, with the pandemic and our rearview mirror, basically. Uh, what does that mean, layoff? So a lot of people refer to layoff as a termination without cause. They, they use that when they really mean a termination without cause. So no, in the eyes of the law, a layoff really is a situation where it's a temporary termination or a temporary layoff. So the only time we use the term layoff is if a company put us off for work on a temporary basis with the idea that they'll call us back to work. So a layoff is not a situation where you lost your job. A layoff is a temporary situation where the companies put you off hoping to call you back in the future. Hoping is a big word. You never get usually a timeline when it comes to the temporary layoff. So do you have to accept it and just lay down and wait or can you do something about it? So in most cases, and for most people, a temporary layoff is not legal, or it's not something an employer is allowed to do. So if you're put on a temporary layoff, the company doesn't have a right to do that, which means you, the employee, may have the ability to consider that temporary layoff to be a termination and require, demand that the company pay you your full severance. So if you're put on a temporary layoff, yes, you can accept it. You can sit at home and see what happens. Sure, fine, you can do that. Or you can say, no, I'm not accepting it. I'm in instead choosing to treat that as a termination and get severance. Of course, keep in mind, if you accept the temporary layoff and go back to work, you've given the company the right to do it again and again. And that's not a good thing. So you may want to stand up for your rights and not accept that uh, temporary layoff. Well, I mean, the big question, you know, we get every week on the radio show and the TV show through correspondence is how much severance am I owed following that termination, right? So remember, if you lost your job, unless you did something awful, terrible, you stole, you hit someone, et cetera, you're owed your full severance. And that's not, by the way, a week per year. That's not two weeks per year. It's a lot more. It's based on several factors, including your age, your position, and the length of your employment. And that could be as much as 24 months pay, 24 months severance. Even if you're a short service employee, you're still gonna be owed severance that's a few months. The easiest, fastest way you can find out now how much severance you're owed, you just go to pocketemploymentlawyer.ca, use the severance calculator, or you call me. But guess what? It's a lot more than what you realize. And as we mentioned and illustrated before with a phone call, you can always reach out to Lior and myself as we do our radio show Sundays at 1 p.m. on News Talk 1010 right here in the GTA. And as I mentioned, we'll try to get to two or three over the half hour. Phone call number two, Lior, is coming up right now. I work for a very large municipality, non-unionized. So I've been there five and a half years. When I started, we did not have any stipulations on how many shifts we had to provide or had to work per month. And now they've recently changed it for all new hires. They have to work minimum seven shifts per month. So now my manager is trying to come down on me saying that I need to fall in line with the way the new regulations are. For this month, I was given zero shifts. The manager told me that I should see whether or not I'm a fit for the company still. Seriously, I mean, come on. <laughs> what kind of employer thinks that that's okay? I've just decided not to give you shifts anymore and that's on you, employee. Nonsense, wrong. Of course you can't do that. So in this case, that employer decided not to schedule this person for shifts. They can't do that. That's a constructive dismissal. Your employer can't just decide to reduce your hours like that unilaterally. That's not allowed. So by doing that, that by changing the terms of employment, by not scheduling, that now gives the employee the right to consider that to be a constructive dismissal, okay? You may be able to say, by not scheduling me, by imposing new rules, you may be able to say, now I'm getting severance, I'm leaving, I'm not accepting this, I'm not okay with this, and now you have to pay me my full severance, uh, and if that's what you wanna do, if you're ever faced with a change to your hours, to your days of work, to your compensation, to your responsibilities, that concept of constructive dismissal should jump to mind, and you have to give me a call so we deal with it properly. Okay, we've covered a lot of ground, Lior, but we've got so much more to do, and we'll do that after break, including, as I mentioned, that third phone call. That is on the way, so stick around for it as we continue. This is Ask a Lawyer on CP24. Do you have questions about your employment rights? Ask a Lawyer is here for you. Each week, experts from employmentlawyer.ca answer your questions. Visit cp24.com slash askalawyer and watch Wednesdays at 9.30 p.m. on CP24.
and welcome back. Thank you so much for sticking around. Ask a lawyer here on CP24. You want to reach out to Lior Sanfiru anytime. Phone call's good. 1-855-821-5900 or email. Always reachable. Ask at employmentlawyer.ca and you can use that QR code as well. As we mentioned, uh, radio shows, we do it across the country, but we focus heavily Sundays at 1 p.m. right here in the GTA on News Talk 1010. Please join us. Grab the phone, make a phone call during the hour and ask your questions. You're asking things that thousands of other people wonder. And we'll get to phone call number three right now, Lior. So listen up. I worked at a company for 26 years. All they gave me was a lieu of notice, eight weeks, and uh, a reference letter. And wow. that was it. And I was wondering if I applied for unemployment insurance, does that mean I automatically accept what the package that they gave me? It just happened two weeks ago. I had a friend help me write up a letter asking for a certain amount. And if I don't hear from them, I told them I would seek legal advice. Might be a little light on the severance. A little bit. Uh, just a smidgen. Just a <laughs> yeah. smidgen. But, but I get asked this often yep. in a situation where, you know, maybe the company deposits the amount in your bank account. Uh, by accepting that, by having in the bank, does that mean you've accepted their severance offer? No, not at all, not even close. So, yes, if the company gives you money, get, put severance in your account, yes, it's your money. If you apply for EI, you haven't accepted their bad severance offer. The only way you can accept a company's severance offer is by signing a, a legal document that says, you know, here's what we're paying you, and you agree that that's all we owe you. If you sign a document like that, then you've accepted. You can apply for EI. You can take the money that they deposit in your account. That's fine. The key here is this. He is owed a lot more than eight weeks severance after 26 years of employment. That's a lot more. So we're going to go back to pocketemploymentlawyer.ca, use a severance calculator to see just how much more he's owed. So 58 years old, supervisor, been there for 26 years, long time. Company says eight weeks, that's all you get. Uh-uh, not even close. You see right there he's owed as much as 24 months pay. So not two months, 24 months. That's the difference. That's what he's owed. That's a wrongful dismissal. I get calls like that every day in my office. We can resolve these things. We resolve them every day. If you are let go, it doesn't matter if you worked there for 26 years like this person or 26 days. Give me a call. Let's make sure you get everything the law says you should have. Okay, Lior, I think we've got time to slide an email in uh, during this segment, so let's get to that. Anytime, ask at employmentlawyer.ca. says, my company just merged with another one. The new employer is automatically putting us all in a three-month probation period. Is that allowed? Well, if it makes the company happy, sure, <laughs> let's do it. As a practical matter, it doesn't do anything, and here's why. When you, the company sold, the new employer, if they hire you on, they inherit your service. So you're not really on probation. It doesn't mean anything. If the company sleeps better at night by saying you're on probation, fine, don't fight it. It doesn't mean anything. It doesn't do anything, which means if you lose your job in the first few months, you are still going to be owed severance that accounts for your time with the previous company. The more important thing is don't sign an employment agreement that limits your future severance. Don't worry about probation. Just don't sign something that limits your future severance. That can cost you tens of thousands of dollars. So if you're put uh, in front of you, if a new agreement is put in front of you, call me before you sign it. All right, Lior, next thing we want to tackle is can I be employed and still be out job hunting at the same time? We'll tackle that after the break as we got lots more to go here. This is Ask a Lawyer on CP24. Don't go anywhere. You have questions about your employment rights? Ask a Lawyer is here for you. Each week, experts from employmentlawyer.ca answer your questions. Visit cp24.com slash askalawyer and watch Wednesdays at 9.30 p.m. on CP24. back again ask a lawyer here on cp24 always reach out to leor don't sit there wondering if you've asked the right question or didn't ask the right question pick up a phone and ask the question 1-855-821-5900 or send an email ask at employmentlawyer.ca got a question for you leo this comes from your live stream of course you host those on youtube and facebook to reach out anytime stlawyers.ca can i look for another job while still employed would they legally be able to punish or even fire me for cause if they learned i was seeking opportunities elsewhere. What do you think? I actually get this asked often, and I've seen this happen with both employees and employers, so let's break this down. 
no, you're not doing anything wrong by looking for another job. Of course, if you're working, you should be work, doing work for the company. You shouldn't be spending that time looking for another job and doing things that are not related to your, to your job. But if on your time you're looking for another work, you're sending out resumes, you're not doing anything wrong. So if your employer finds out, yes, they may be upset, they may not like it, but no, that doesn't mean they can discipline you. That doesn't mean they can fire you for cause because you've done nothing wrong. But here's the thing. Can your employer still let you go because they're upset you're looking for another job? Yes, they can. Why? Because we know your employer can let you go pretty much for any reason as long as severance is paid. So as long as your employer pays you your severance, they can let you go for that reason or for any reason. Yeah, and there, so there may be an, a, a potential a chance that if your employer finds out you're looking for another job, that they will let you go. But again, that's a without cause termination, not a for cause termination. That means your full severance has to be paid and has to be paid right away. And again, pocketemploymentlawyer.ca. We always, always tell people in that situation, if you're going to be let go for doing that, go to that website, figure out on your own with the severance calculator. It takes about 30 seconds to use that. It is no problem. But we are out of time. Thank you so much for your correspondence, your emails and phone calls from the radio show. Again, you can always reach out on the radio as we do it here Sundays, 1 p.m. News Talk 1010 in the GTA. Call us and you can always call Lior as well any other time. 1-855-821-5900 is the number. That email address is ask at employmentlawyer.ca for all other matters anytime cp24.com slash ask a lawyer thank you so much and we'll catch you next time right here on ask a lawyer